How to set up random starting positions for the player, an enemy, or an object. What's up everybody, this is Gunter Serverlow. Today I'm going to share some code with you where you could set up a random start for you and your friends or just a random start for an enemy or an object. Let's go to the editor. We're going to go to Stratus and we're going to go over here to the airfield and what we're going to do is we're going to set up five random positions where the player is going to start at. Four hangars and an office building. So what we're going to start with is a rifleman. We're going to create the player and two friends. So one friend is going to be an AT rifleman and another friend is going to be an auto rifleman. We're going to group these two to the player. And then we're going to go to the player, edit the player, and we're going to give him a name. And it doesn't have to be anything special. We're just going to name him player one. And then the next guy, the AT rifleman, we're going to name, we're going to set the playable because you want, you, you want your friends to be able to choose these guys. We're going to name him player two. And then we're going to edit this guy, make him playable, and we're going to name him Player 3. Alright, so these guys are set up. Next, we're going to go to the map, and we're going to choose Markers, which is F6. We're going to go down to System, and then choose the Empty Marker. And we're going to scroll in and place a Marker. So edit the marker. It doesn't matter what you name the marker as long as the code that I show you that the marker name is defined in there. So we're going to keep this simple. We're just going to go M1, M for marker. We're going to copy this marker and then control C, B, 3. So now we have five markers and we're going to edit this one. We're going to make this M2, M3, M4 and M5. Okay, so now we got five markers and we're gonna place, move these markers to the edge here of the building. That way we could look out once, if, if and when we are in that building. So what this does is it basically creates a random starting position for the player. So now we have the marker set up where we want. This is just a small scale demonstration. We're going to go to the player and to make this work, put a code into the player's INIT box. So you're going to edit the player. You're going to go to his INIT box and you're going to put the following code. So this is going to be player one set pause which is set position space left bracket get marker pause or position space put another bracket and you're going to put select random then you're going to hit space again and then you're going to put a left bracket Oops, a uh, square bracket. And we're going to put, this is where we're going to put the uh, names of the markers. So we're going to put quotes, M1, end quote, and comma. So you're going to have your marker name inside of two quotes. And then to have another marker name next to that, you're going to, you're going to put a comma. So we're going to put another comma. We're going to go M2, quote, comma, quote, M3, quote, comma, quote, M4, quote, comma, quote, and M5, quote. And once you do M5 and you, end, you do the quote, you don't need a comma. The only time you need a comma is if you're going to have 
uh, another thing after that. So we're not going to have anything after the M5 except for a bracket to close close that box just like that. All right. So then after that box, we're going to put two brackets. Let's see. Need this bracket and then we're going to put the opposite. You're going to put two brackets and then a semicolon. So take a look at this code. So we have the player, he's going to be set at a position based on the marker. So whatever the marker position, and then it'll be random. So basically he's going to be randomly set at a marker position between one of one of five of these markers that are on the map. So just remember this bracket here is closed by this bracket. This bracket here is closed by this and then the semicolon and closes the whole code. All right, so that's, we're not done yet. We're gonna go down a couple lines. So just hit your space bar and go down one. Just so you can clearly see what you're typing out. All right, so this next line is gonna be underscore and new pause or new position space equals space player one space again model to world space left bracket one comma space dash space two comma zero right bracket and then a semicolon all right, so we're going to hit spacebar again. We're going to go down another line just so that we could see the code clearly. This code here is going to set up your two friends, player player 2 and player 3. So we're going to put player 2 space set pause or set position space underscore new pause and then semicolon and then semicolon and then we're going to go down one line and we're going to go player three space set pause space underscore new pause semicolon all right and then we have player two Player two is going to set position basically on the player's position. So the player one is the new position and player three is going to basically do the same. So from here you just hit OK and that sets up the code. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Place the marker, place that code. And now we're going to save this mission. I'm going to go down to Stratus and we're going to name this random underscore start and save that and then we're gonna check it out we're gonna see where we start at all right so we showed up at marker number two let's restart this and see where we end up again all right so we ended up in hangar number four marker number four let's do it one more time let's see where we start Oh, here we are. And now we're in front of the office building. Let's go back to the editor. What we're going to do now is I'm going to show you another way where you can use vehicles, like enemy vehicles, as a way to basically set up random starts for them. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the map. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the code from his initialization box. The player is going to start wherever and we're gonna keep the entire code. We're just gonna take it away from the player. The player name doesn't matter because it's not gonna affect the player. We're gonna move the player to a new location. I'll just put them right here. And then we'll just turn them around. We're going to place a vehicle for independent. Let's place an FIA vehicle. So car, off-road, HMG. So we're going to place this guy right here. I'm going to name this guy Brock. That's going to be his name. And then inside his initialization box, 
going to put the code that we use for the player. And we're not going to use these two because that was just for the, uh, the two other players. So then you come up to here and you just change this to truck. And then you're going to change this part here to truck. And then that's it. So we'll save this and then we're going to hit save. When the mission starts, the truck is going to be moved to one of five of those positions. Halt. So we're going to go to spectator and see where this guy is at. And there he is. He's over here. So he's in that position. So we could do this for ammo boxes as well. So let's go to empty. We're going to type in ammo. And I'm going to grab the FIA ammo cache. And I'm going to edit this. Now there's a trick with this code. You're going to have to put a number after the name on this. Remember, the name really doesn't matter but for some reason the code doesn't like just ammo alone. So we're going to make this say ammo and then one. So we still have the code on our clipboard. And so we could basically just go control V and put the code that we had in the truck and in the player into the initialization box of the ammo box. Now these last two lines for player two and player three we don't need. And all we need to do here is change player one to ammo one and then player one here to ammo one we're going to set up some new markers so we're gonna name this s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 and that's it hit OK and the ammo box part is set up we just need to do the markers so we're gonna go to the map and instead of placing new markers just copy what you got just like that and then control C we could actually just put them out front just for the sake of the you know the demo but we'll put them right here so they're close close together Actually place them right about here. Place an object next to them. I'm gonna place an arrow next to them. We got a blue arrow here, a siren arrow here, a yellow arrow next to this guy, a red arrow next to this guy, and a pink arrow next to this guy. So what we need to do is these arrows are not needed. You don't they're not required. So just remember you only need to change the markers. So we name this S1 S2 S3 S4 and S5. All right, so the markers are set. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna save it and we're gonna play it. So we're gonna go to Spectator and see where these guys are at. Ammo box moved to this guy and the truck moved over there. So let's restart this and see where they start again. So now we have the ammo box over here on the yellow one and the truck is over here. What I'm going to show you now is three missions that I built. Two of them are the same and the other one uses multiple objectives with tasks and stuff using this code. So I'm going to give you guys basically a quick idea of what this looks like. So we're going to go to a mission on Altis. So in this mission basically I have two players and a truck. So what I did here is I have the player, a player two, which I grouped to the player, and I have a truck. So if we look at the player, I have a lot of markers for this, but the code is the same. A lot of markers. And then for the truck, all I did is 
how I have it here, I have player two set position, new position, just like just like on the previous map. And then for the truck, I did the same thing. So nothing's really changed there. Now, if I go to the map, you can see where the player initially starts. And of course, this is for Ravage, so I have different modules and stuff for the mission. But for the play, random player start, I put all these markers all over the map, all over the map of Altus, the player would randomly start. So if I play the scenario, and here we are. So I don't have a map, that's how I kind of started it, but you don't, I don't know where I'm at. I'm not definitely not where I was, so this is a random start. Alright, let's go check out another mission, and this one is on Tanoa. Alright, so now we're on Tanoa. It's the same exact set that set up as before. I have a truck, I have a player, and then you can see the code. And basically we go to the map and you can see where I placed all the markers. So this is just basically random player setup. I have another mission that I'm going to show you. This is a mission that I built. This mission is called the ISIL Foothold. Now what I want to show you in this is, let's go to the map. This is where the player starts. Alright, so the player starts at a base players inside this building turn off the overlay so the player has starts when he gets killed he switched to one of these players but basically the player starts here he starts at a base and he finds whatever way to get to the enemy so you could see kind of see different markers and icons and so forth so there's about 18 tasks tied to infantry, objects, ammo boxes, vehicles, etc. So let me give you an example. What I did here is I named this truck MG Car. All right, so I have the code. Don't worry about the call part. But I use a similar code. And I have about seven or eight markers where this guy is at so the markers here is m40 and 41 42 and this guy will start here so this is one of the markers he might start over here Let's see 44 that's one of them he might start let's see he won't start in this one he might start over here. Yep, there's one of them. And then he might start here. Here's another one. I mean, when the mission starts, he gets moved randomly. So every time you start the mission, you don't know where this guy is going to show up. He's either going to be here or one of these four different places. Now, another objective I have is a radio tower, which is this. So this is a transmitter pole. This is radio. So I set this as radio. Markers I have for this is M48, 49, 50, 51. And this guy will start right here. This is one of the markers here. And then one of these is a marker. Yeah, he'll start. Yeah, 51. He might start over here, I'm 53. He might start in one of these positions. I have these all tied to tasks. So the way I do tasks is I usually like to put uh, markers on the map, but I have a trigger for this. So this trigger is basically a live radio. So when you destroy the, the radio tower, I put up a hint and it deletes the marker radio one which is this this marker that deletes that's not something you have to do but but this is this is tied to a task so i give some you know locate and destroy the radio antenna and get some information about it task type so that shows up and then i have something for a uh, commander so this is a commander 
officer is com and basically I have ESCOM set position in 2021 and then I have ISF1, ISF2 which is these guys ISF2 so these guys kind of protect them so these guys will, will spawn basically be moved and then another thing I have is a scientist the scientist I have will randomly be moved this is our scientist named him POW and we have POW1 set position get marker A1, A2, A3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so he's going to be in all these different compounds I actually have them in compounds so this is one of them A8 he might show up in here and then when you're basically when you enter this trigger this trigger here to save the POW will happen is the POW will join the player and then say thanks for saving me or something like that. So I have that there. I have it here. And you can kind of see where the markers are going to be at. So these markers will basically are for the POW which is our scientist and he will be randomly moved between one of these areas which you got to find. So yeah, I did an ammo cache for this. So is cache, ISIS, ISIS cache, that's the, that was the idea. It's going to be M24, 25, 26, get marker, marker position. So basically this cache will randomly be found over here, over here, over here in this compound or over here cache locate and destroy the ammo cache and then I got a description box so it's a pretty in-depth mission because of that so this is this is one way to make your mission dynamic so to speak because you'll never find one of those objects in the same spot just some ideas for you guys to mess with I hope you guys uh, learn something from this and what I'll do is I'll zip up the original mission that's on Stratus I'll upload it put it on my Google Drive I'll link it in the description of the video so you guys can download it and check it out and look at the code if you guys enjoyed this and learned something from it and uh, find this useful thank you guys for watching and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.